Kai, what did this thing do? Oh, uh, it makes stuff cool. It makes stuff cool. Whoa. That, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Hey, we have five on me. This, this isn't good. You know what, it, it's fine. It's just a little wardrobe malfunction. Nothing we can't handle. Where the heck did this Corvette come from? Does, does he even have a license? <laughs> no, he does not. Well, we should probably put this somewhere safe. No, Josh, don't! With the Celsius line of all-in-one liquid coolers from Fractal Design, it's easy to stay cool. Click on the link in the description for more info. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today is the long-awaited upgrade of my No 202 build, the Go Anywhere Do Anything PC, which, you know, I built last year or so, and since then, it really can't do anything. It can still go anywhere but it's been slowing down incrementally over the last few months, especially when it comes to more heavily threaded tasks like streaming or video editing. I've actually noticed a significant slowdown since the day I built it. So we are gonna be upgrading the crap out of it. Nearly every part is getting a pretty fat upgrade. So this is really exciting, including, I'm just gonna go down the list really quick. For starters, we're dropping the 6700K for a Ryzen 7 1700, which literally has double the number of cores and threads. This thing's gonna be awesome for streaming and video editing and Definitely no slouch when it comes to gaming either. We're slotting that into the Biostar Racing X370 GTN, which is the first mini ITX motherboard for AM4 that you can purchase in the US, to my knowledge. I already did a video on it, so you can go ahead and check that out. It's a fantastic little board for not too much money. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I might have to populate one of my USB ports in the back with a Wi-Fi adapter or something like that. But for the most part, it should be a fantastic little board for our needs. We've also got a 16 gigabyte kit. That's two eight gig sticks of G-Skill Ripjaws 5. Uh, I believe, let me see what the speed is on this. 3200 megahertz DDR4 with very nice gunmetal gray heat spreaders. And for our CPU cooler, you might not call this an upgrade because we're, we're actually ditching the current AIO that's in the system right now to this Cryo Rig C7, which is an air cooler. It's a very small one. You can't really fit a massive air cooler at all inside of the Node 202. That being said, I've worked with this cooler in the past. It's very good for its price and size. And uh, while it doesn't support Ryzen out of the box, I was able to get an AM4 bracket for full compatibility. So that should be pretty fun. Uh, the reason why I'm going air cooler instead of liquid coolers, because there just aren't many 120 millimeter AIOs that support AM4 at the moment. I may upgrade in the future, but for now the C7, I'm really excited to see what it can do on this 65 watt TDP Ryzen CPU. For our power supply, now the No 202 already has the Fractal Design included power supply, 450 watt, uh, which is 80 plus certified and all that, but it's not modular and it's got those hideous ketchup and mustard cables. And even though you can't really see them from the outside of the case, I still know deep down in my heart that they're ugly as hell. So I'm replacing that unit with this SF450 unit from Corsair. It's 80 plus gold, it's fully modular, and it just looks absolutely beautiful with those black flat cables. And finally, we've got the GeForce GTX 1070 Mini from Gigabyte. This is the factory overclocked model, and I can't wait to use it. This is going to be a huge upgrade over the uh, existing Radeon R9 Nano that's been in here. It was a kick-ass card when it first came out, and now it's really starting to show its age, especially now with all of the super fast Pascal GPU offerings on the market. So that's what we're dealing with today, guys. Should be a lot of fun, and uh, we will be doing some A-B comparison testing as well with gaming and coding. Uh, thermals, acoustics, all that jazz. We'll save that for the end of the video though. I'm really excited to see what kind of gains can be had with this new hardware. For now, let's go ahead and start swapping these parts out or in or both. We're, we're doing a, a hardware a transplant, if you will, right now. So let's go ahead and kick that off. Three, two, one, go. I hope that bracket's made of metal.
Sorry, I ran out of royalty-free porn groove music, but here's the build all complete. Woo! Looking good, I might add. I like the power supply, I like how it's all black, I like how the cables are all black. It makes the whole system a bit more color neutral, which is good by me. And uh, look at this cable management. It's, it's not the best, but uh, you know, I tried. I tried. It definitely looks a lot better in the lower chamber simply because the radiator from the AIO is gone, which I think also is good for the vid video card. I think it creates a better thermal situation overall because there's not something sort of blocking any potential airflow that might be coming from this ventilation here. You know, the, the uh, GTX 1070 Mini, it is a little bit bigger than the Radeon R9 Nano, but not by much. It's actually more, you know, it's, it's about the same uh, length, but it's just a little bit taller. At first I was like, ooh, I didn't check. Is this video card gonna fit in the Note 202? But it fits just fine. There's even maybe a, you know, three quarters to an inch of clearance at the bottom there. So no problem in case you were wondering if that would fit in this particular chassis. And up here, let's see what we got here. We got here. Uh, you, you can't really see the, uh, the 2.5 inch drive that's behind this mess of cables here. It's a 960 gig Savage from Kingston HyperX. And this is one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, which I'm sure most of you deduced by now, which is I'm using the same storage configuration as in the 1.0 version of this build, which includes that drive, of course, as well as a 512 gig, uh, what is it? An M.2 NVMe Samsung 950 Pro that's actually mounted behind the motherboard because that's where the only M.2 slot on that board is. And it's a super fast drive. Like I said, NVMe, it's not the latest, it's not the 960 Pro, but it's super fast still um, for what it's worth. So I didn't feel the need to upgrade really, but that's pretty much all I have to say about the build. Um, just looking really fly, really fly, man. And so I think at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and change camera angle so we can talk about the thing I am most excited to discuss, which is performance. Now this being a small form factor system, I knew going into this that I couldn't dial in a heavy OC for our CPU and our GPU. In fact, I left the video card completely alone apart from maxing out the power and temp sliders. Um, but it already does come with the factory OC out of the box and it's pretty blazing fast as is. Uh, and as you're about to see in the benchmarks, um, I don't think it needs to be pushed that much further at the expense of additional heat and noise. As far as our CPU goes, I was able to dial in an overclock on all cores of 3.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, which I'm pretty happy with. I did do 3.9, I fiddled with that for a bit. Uh, I just couldn't get the voltage low enough to reduce the amount of overheating. It was getting pretty hot, and we'll take a look, look at temps in just a moment. Now our RipJaws 5 kit was having some compatibility issues with the Biostar motherboard, so in order to hit 3200 megahertz, which I really wanted to do for the system, uh, I actually swapped out those modules for a G-Skill Flare X kit, which is validated and certified to support and be compatible with Ryzen. As soon as I popped those sticks in, it was smooth sailing. Uh, I had to punch in the uh, settings manually in the BIOS, of course, but after that, the 3200 megahertz speed took just fine, and that is running stable as well. Now, apart from our rendering and live streaming tests, I only ran three additional AAA games at 2560 by 1440 to give us an idea of what kind of performance gains we're seeing with the 2.0 version of the Go Anywhere Do Anything PC. And as you're about to see, the results are very telling. So without further ado, here's a look. Now, if your jaw is completely on the floor by now, leave it to low temperatures in a small form factor case like the Note 202 to bring it back up into place. We didn't see the most favorable thermals here, whether it was with the 1.0 or the 2.0 build, um, even with the liquid AIO, our 1.0 system, uh, the CPU was still getting up to 86 degrees Celsius. We were running one degree cooler on our 1700. 85 degrees Celsius is nothing to write home about, that's for sure, but we're still within safe operating temperatures. Um, this definitely builds a case for swapping out eventually uh, liquid cooled AIO. Once 120 millimeter AIOs become more readily available for AM4 and Ryzen, 
I will strongly consider swapping that out. Maybe I'll do a little update video. Uh, as far as the GPU goes, we uh, we saw 79 degrees Celsius on the R9 Nano, which is actually not bad at all. But bear in mind, it's a much slower GPU than the GTX 1070, which does come factory overclocked out of the box. We were hitting 85 degrees Celsius on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the drawing board and maybe tweak the fan curves. These are all just running at automatic fan curves, just in the interest of time. Uh, once I fine tune those, I can probably get it down a little bit, maybe at the expense of some noise. But overall, even though the thermals aren't amazing, we're still managing to pack a ton of horsepower into a small footprint without turning our entire system into a melty, combustible pile of goop. Finally, I did do an acoustics test, and I'll let you know right now, the 2.0 build is quite a bit noisier, simply because we no longer have the liquid-cooled AIO in there, and the fan on the C7 has to spin extra fast in order to keep all eight of those overclocked cores on our 1700 under wraps. That being said, it's fairly unobtrusive, and if you're listening to in-game audio with either some monitors or a pair of cans, you're really not going to notice it to the point where it becomes a distraction from your gameplay. So with that said, here's a listen. But there you have it guys, this has been the Go Anywhere Do Anything PC 2.0, and while it's definitely not perfect, that also leaves a lot of room for improvement, which means we could see a version 3.0 in the near future, which is definitely an exciting prospect. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to toss me a like on it before you go, and also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, I'm Kyle Bidwit. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.